Santosh and Adam. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, Myriad. And I'm, I know that you guys are pretty familiar with Mesos, I guess. Um, OK, sorry. Uh, how many people like know what Apache Yarn is? Okay. How many people uh, use Apache Yarn? OK. How many people intend to use both Mesos and Yarn together? Right. OK. Uh, so um, well, uh, today we are going to talk about Apache Myriad, which, uh, and uh, we're going to talk about like why is it needed, um, how, uh, what's its architecture, and uh, in the end we'll have a cool demo uh, of uh, Myriad running on the, uh, the the DC OS. So why is Myriad needed? So we have Apache Mesos, which is a which has a pretty awesome ecosystem of frameworks around it. So you have uh, Marathon and Aurora for long running services, and then you have Kronos for batch applications. You have Spark for analytics, and yada yada yada. And then you have uh, Apache Hadoop or Yarn, uh, which also has a decent ecosystem of uh, apps like MapReduce, EdgeBase, Spark, etc. And uh, like some of you want to run both of these together, right? Now, if you think about it, when you try to run both of them together in your data center, so both of them are basically resource manager, and they, they manage uh, the set of resources that uh, that are allocated to them, right? But when you try to run them together, what happens? Like, you get isolated clusters, right? Or you get a static partition in your data center. And when I say that, what I mean is you have uh, the green set of resources, uh, which, are, which are running Mesos slaves on them, and then they are pretty much managed by Mesos. And then on the right side, you have uh, yarn uh, depicted by the blue nodes. Uh, they're all running node managers, and they're managed by the, um, the resource manager, right? Now, if you have workloads uh, that are running on Mesos cluster, you cannot fail over them on, on the yarn and vice versa, right? So, um, so basically, your resources are getting logged in, right, uh, to, these, uh, to these different separate clusters. And because of that, you cannot do a couple of things. For example, if you have if you run a website and you have, let's say, a traffic spike on your website, and you want to fail over the load of, let's say, your Aurora Marathon cluster onto the resources that are logged into to Yarn, you cannot do that, right? And if you are off the, the peak hours and uh, you have uh, some analytics jobs to do and uh, you would like to leverage some capacity from your web cluster, uh, you cannot do that because there is no sharing going on, right? Um, now, with Myriad, where we want to go is we want to go to a, a model of a data center where there are no partitions, and both the Mesos and Yarn can happily live ever after. And so, when I say that, what I mean is on each no on any node of your data center, you can pretty much run a Mesos task or or a Yarn task, and uh, with that, you can we can enable all the, res the the use cases that I talked in the last slide. And at this point, I'll give it to, to Santosh, who will um, talk about Meetup in more detail. Thanks, everyone, for uh, coming up for the Meetup today. Um, so going forward, right? So why else is Meetup needed? So basically, like uh, you know, he talked, Mohit covered about like static partitioning of uh, data center resources, um, and he gave examples of uh, the frameworks that uh, run in a Mesos cluster, and examples of some frameworks or some applications that run in a Yarn cluster. So, uh, you know, basically, like Mesos is trying to enable uh, scaling of uh, different distributed applications in the Mesos cluster. And often, case like uh, these are all like kind of like front ends for your uh, business. You know, for example, if you are running Twitter, like you have a huge Twitter.com that's running or backed by a bunch of web servers, and you got like you get a lot of uh, clickstream traffic through this, and uh, you got actually ingest that data somewhere. And you know, once you have the data ingestion, right? You have, you know, you want to run some kind of analytics on top of it. And you know, Hadoop had been like, you know, pretty good at handling or storing big data, and uh, you know, giving a framework for analyzing big data. Uh, and you know, Mesos had been pretty good at trying to scale applications, um, but you know, there is no way uh, currently to actually have both of them, both of these two different uh, systems coexist. Um, the, the main problem is that you know data is uh, heavy, and uh, you know apps want to share the data, you know, 
uh, they want to serve the uh, data that is stored in, in Hadoop uh, as well as write data back into Hadoop. So what we need really is uh, um, you know, something like this, where you have a bunch of machines that you are um, arranging in your data center, and you, have, you need uh, a, a shared data services layer bo that both apps and uh, you know, um, uh, data processing engines like MapReduce or Spark can utilize. Uh, but to do that, you also need uh, you know, a resource management layer that can actually cut across uh, all the machines in your data center. And you need, uh, you know, you, you want your apps, both uh, you know, web apps or any other applications, also the frame, uh, processing frameworks to run on top of it. So what does Myriad really do, right? So Myriad tries to make YAN a framework for Mesos. Um, we have a bunch of frameworks already uh, existing for Mesos, and we want to make YAN another framework for Mesos. So that Mesos can, uh, you know, uh, allocate resources for Yarn. Yarn is pretty good at managing the resources for running uh, applications that are utilizing the data for from Hadoop. So we want to just, you know, separate these two concerns where, you know, let Mesos handle the whole data center resources, let Yarn handle the Hadoop resources, and Myriad kind of like helps to, you know, take resources from Mesos, give to give them to Yarn and do the other way around. Like when Yarn is idle and you know, there's not a lot of processing happening in Hadoop, you, know, you can give them back to Mesos so that you know, other applications that are running Mesos can utilize them. So it looks something like this, right? So we have a, you know, a lot of frameworks already for, um, um, you know, for Mesos. We have Marathon, Jenkins, Spark, Kronos, and so on. And we want to make Yarn another framework so that you know, they can actually seamlessly share resources across the data center in this way. So what are the benefits for trying something as simple as this? You know, again, like restating what I just said, like you, know, you can share resources between Hadoop and non-Hadoop applications. And um, you know, it actually significantly improves uh, resource utilization. Like think of a you know, guy who is buying a lot of machines and trying to run the IT in an enterprise, right? So at the end of the day, like you know, if you basically like have Mesos in one cluster and Yarn in another cluster, and no way to share resources between these two, then that is not a good return on your investment. So you know, Myriad can help you save a bunch of uh, you know a lot of cost for your IT. And uh, you know, one of the other possibilities really is to provision multiple Yarn clusters. You know, a lot of enterprises have a lot of departments, you know, sales, marketing, and so on. And everyone wants a cluster. Everyone wants to run their little compute thing on top of something like Hadoop. And today, like, you know, provisioning of multiple YARN clusters is a big problem. And Myriad can try to solve that problem. You know, when you have Mesos and then like you want to run YARN on top of Mesos. And the cool thing is, it doesn't require any code changes to either YARN side or Mesos side. So, that's like. You know, your apps can just run seamlessly. So how does Myriad do this? You know, Myriad has actually two components. One is a resource management manager plugin. This is where basically Myriad can plug into resource manager as uh, another scheduler. Like it implements um, the standard YARN schedulers like fair scheduler or capacity scheduler. But this scheduler has yet another component to it, which is it can also be a Mesos framework. And it also exposes a REST endpoint so that admins can try to tell Myriad what it needs to do. For example, if it wants, admins can say, hey, I want to scale up the YARN cluster to have like more node managers or scale it down. And uh, Myriad uses a custom Mesos executor because we want to launch a node manager and node manager needs to know a bunch of configuration like you know, where the resource manager is. Or you want to basically mount YARN's C groups under Mesos' C group hierarchy so that actual resource accounting can be possible. So let's look at how um, a YARN cluster can be formed in, uh, in, you know, with Myriad. Let's assume we have Mesos master running, and we have a simple example here where you have a Mesos slave running on one of the nodes. And let's assume we have Yarn with resource manager uh, running uh, on one of the nodes. And we assume that uh, Yarn is configured to run Myriad scheduler 
plugged into resource manager. So as I said, Meteor Scheduler is a framework for uh, Mesos as well. And it also exposes a rest endpoint. So let's say you know admin, admin wants to launch a node manager with a certain capacity. In this case, two CPUs and two gigabytes. Um, so admin invokes a REST API to launch node manager. And um, the media scheduler waits for an offer from Mesos. And once an offer is available, it's, uh, it's going to uh, launch the node manager via Mesos master. So the slave ultimately launches uh, an executor for media. And uh, the media executor in turn launches the node manager. And in this example, you can see that uh, uh, you know the admin actually wants to launch node manager with two gig of CPU and oh, sorry, two gig of RAM and two CPUs. But then uh, media tries to actually bump that up to account for media executor and the node manager. So we try, we try to wait until we get an offer that is 2.5 CPUs and 2.5 gig. And uh, once the node manager launches, node manager discovers where resource manager is. And it's going to advertise the original capacity that it is intended to launch with. Um, and if you have an application that is submitted to uh, YAM, then resource manager can schedule that application on this node manager, and the YAM containers can be launched. So um, this is the current status of the project. Like you know, whatever I just showed <coughs> will be demoed later by Adam. And uh, so that's uh, we have a working prototype of this uh, solution currently, and we are working on a lot of features. Um, uh, for example, like we are trying to see how we can do HA for the framework, and we want to distribute the node manager binaries and the executor binaries uh, on the fly. And we are also thinking of uh, trying to do some. Uh, uh, container level scaling rather than at the node manager level. So we're going to explore a possibility to do that. And we're also trying to see you know, if we can launch multiple YAN clusters in an isolated way on top of Mesos cluster. And last but not the least, we want to work on security so that enterprises are happy with uh, having all the security features. That, uh, hand it over to Adam for the end. Thanks, Santosh. All right. Um, I'll also point out that the first three of, of those uh, upcoming features we all worked on together last week at a Mesosphere Hack Week. Uh, made significant progress, had proof of concepts of uh, framework. Uh, well, we had significant progress on the HA features. We had a demo of the fine grain scaling and uh, the distribution of binaries as well. So we're making significant progress there, and after the demo, I'll talk about how you can help us make more progress. So this is a video demo based on a, a cluster we set up for the Hadoop World Strata conference uh, recently. Uh, so we've got 20 nodes here uh, running. This is the DCOS data center operating system visualizer and the DCOS command line here. Uh, Currently, there's nothing running on this cluster. Uh, we've got Marathon and Kronos as pre-installed services. Uh, we mentioned before Marathon is for long-running services. Kronos is for like a distributed cron with dependencies for launching batch jobs, scheduling, scheduled batch jobs. And then we've got this more services to you know, add other ones like um, Spark, Cassandra, Storm, Myriad, and HDFS. So uh, let's go ahead and start playing this demo. So uh, you'll see that we've got uh, you know, memory and CPU utilization shown on each of these, or allocation technically, uh, shown on each of these nodes. And you know, nothing's running yet. We can also, there's also a graph where you can see the you know, allocation over time. Uh, I think I spoke a little ahead of myself, but yeah, so we can install other services. Uh, I'll point out HDFS uh, first because that's another framework that we're working on that should be a, uh, will allow you to run HDFS as a framework on Mesos and use the recent disk quota isolation and the persistence primitives that are upcoming to guarantee that your persistent state can be recovered even if you know this individual tasks go down or entire nodes go down. 
Uh, and you know, that way, you know, even Yarn doesn't isolate the resources that HDFS uses, so Mesos can be able to do that. Uh, this demo, however, was uh, built on top of the MapR infrastructure, so it was running the MapR file system. Uh, you might see a little hint of that later. But so in order to start up uh, the Myriad framework right now, uh, you'll start the uh, resource manager, which starts the Myriad scheduler as a plugin in the resource manager. Uh, so we do that there, and you see quickly Myriad is added to the installed services. Um, we've also done some work to be able to launch the Myriad scheduler, or really the resource manager, as a task on Marathon. Uh, so then, you know, when you start Myriad, you'll see a Marathon task running on one of these nodes, and then the Myriad framework will also be installed onto your DCOS. Uh, and it, doing this on, via Marathon means that even if the resource manager goes down on one node, Myriad will be able to start it up, or, I mean, Marathon will be able to start it up on another node. So you don't need to run multiple backup resource managers. You can just let Marathon guarantee that one is always up. So even though we started Myriad, we didn't actually scale up any node managers yet. Uh, so you see that with a simple command line instruction can scale up myriad-scaleup.shell <laughs> to medium. And then uh, behind the scenes, it's doing a curl to a JSON endpoint, uh, telling you two instances, profile medium to the Myriad uh, scheduler API. So it's just a RESTful API. Uh, we're going to be integrating this in with the standardized DCOS CLI so that uh, the same commands that you use to scale up the number of Cassandra nodes or uh, the number of instances of your Marathon app will work just as well with scaling up Myriad. Um, I envision at some point you can have a pretty dial where you just select a service and scale up, scale down, but that might be a little farther in the future. Uh, so you can see up here at least that we have yeah, two uh, node managers running. And as we mentioned, these are like static profiles. So uh, yeah, so you're just, you're not taking up the entire node, just a portion of it. Well, this isn't all that interesting. So let's, we're gonna start an Nginx container uh, via Marathon. Uh, that's still only one instance, not that exciting, but you can see that there are, you know, Marathon apps and Myriad, you know, Yarn apps running on the same cluster. So let's scale this up a bit. Uh, did DCOS Marathon Scale Web Service 20. So that's like the application name. Uh, and now, after a minor delay, after I actually unpause it, uh, we have 20 instances. Uh, we happen to have two co-located on one machine because we didn't set up a host constraint to guarantee that they all always on one. But the exciting thing here is you actually have uh, one of these Docker container Nginx uh, apps running on the same node as a node manager. And we're isolating the resources between them so you know, your Hadoop jobs cannot take down your website and vice versa. Um, make it a little more exciting here and go ahead and launch another couple of node managers. Uh, Myriad scale up to medium and so we've got more and then you can just run your MapReduce jobs as usual uh, since it actually doesn't interfere with the the yarn API uh, oops, it finished but yeah so it doesn't interfere with the yarn API so uh, however your Hadoop users are interacting with yarn already they don't even have to know the difference. They just talk directly to Yarn, start uh, Hadoop jobs, or you run HBase or whatever, and Myriad is just managing how many node managers you have and scaling that up or down, or eventually dynamically scaling the size of the container that the node manager and its resources are contained in. Uh, so, as we mentioned before, no code changes needed to Hadoop, no code changes needed to Mesos, it just implements existing interfaces. Uh, so that was the demo. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Myriad in the Apache Incubator. 
The title slide said Apache Myriad, but we need to have the caveat that it is incubating at the moment. Uh, we, it was voted into the Apache incubator at the beginning of this month. You can go view the proposal right here. And I'm working with Ben Heinemann, our champion in the incubator, to set up you know, a dev mailing list, uh, JIRA, uh, a official Apache incubator, GitHub, and you know, a nice web page for us. And I uh, would also like to mention that we are accepting new contributors and committers. And if you ever wanted an apache.org email address, participating in an incubator project is the easiest way to get in. So, you know, submit some patches. Uh, if you want to get started now, uh, you can read about the project at the incubator proposal, download the source code. It's currently hosted in the Mesos community GitHub repo under Myriad. And we are using GitHub issues until we get uh, the official JIRA set up. Uh, and if you want to find out more, ask any of us some questions, and we'd be happy to explain. Thank you. <laughs>